It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We appreciate that you're still with us this morning. If you just tuned in, uh, we're about to talk about sports on Fridays. We just, you know, just look at, you know, a bit of what's going on in the, the f sporting world, especially football. And most likely we pay attention to uh, Nigeria. However, uh, the under 20 AFCON game would soon, uh, you know, commence. Uh, the boys already, the Flying Eagles, uh, ready set up for or set up for the game preparation, if you like to say. So the Nigerian Flying Eagles have been drawn in a very uh, tough group. I like to call that tough uh, because they will be playing the host, which is Egypt, Mozambique, and Senegal for that 2023 uh, CAF Under 20 Cup of Nation. Well, uh, we have Monday Thomas who joins us this morning uh, to discuss this and all the uh, all the football concerns. Monday, thank you so much for being part of the show. Good morning. Uh, Mercy, it's a pleasure joining you this morning to talk about the Honor 20. In uh, nine days, we'll get to see proceedings. And uh, it looks like everything is happening in the northern part of Africa. We just saw the conclusion of the Chan, which uh, took place in Algeria. And now it's uh, the Honor 20. And I must also like to add that the Honor 17 will be played in Algeria. So it looks like everything is happening in North Africa. But that's not the major concerns. The major concerns right now it's the uh, the Flying Eagles. How are they gearing up? Uh, they are the seven-time African champions, and they're, they're looking to continue in that champion manner. Uh, as uh, Coach Lada Busso has released a 25-man squad for that encounter. Seven NPFL players. We can say they've got experience. They play good football here in the country. Yeah, I like to say that Nigerian football right now is actually improved. I'm talking about the NPFL. We've seen some quality refereeing and we've seen some good football so far in the bridge version of the league. And that's certainly going to uh, going to reflect on how the Flying Eagles will perform at the upcoming Under-20 Cup of Nations. So I, I'd like us to, you know, streamline that conversation to uh, the group. I mean, I have said that this, I mean, looking at the category or the classification, I'd say it's a very tough one. But do you think that we have what it takes, you know, to uh, meet off this game? Uh, we're going to be starting the game, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we're starting that game in the first group with Egypt. We'll be playing Egypt. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, Mozambique and then Senegal in that one. Uh, how do you see us? Do you think that we're able to scale through all of this? Of course, there are question marks because, like you said, it's, it's going to be a very tough group. Everyone will agree with, with that particular one. I mean, pegged alongside the host nation, Egypt, and as well as the current African champions. I'm talking about uh, Senegal. According to the reports from Senegal, they are looking to get five players from uh, five players that won the champ, that just concluded champ uh, to that squad. So the Senegalese side are going to come prepared. They are coming from a tournament and they are going into another tournament with the momentum of winning it. So it's certainly going to be a, a difficult game for Nigeria. And then Nigeria will take on uh, Senegal in their first game, which is in Very nine correct. days' time. Uh, yeah. In, in, in nine days' time, Nigeria will take on Senegal. So it's going to be a very, a very unpredictable game. But with the squad so far, with the 25-man list, who are in the camp, the likes of uh, Daniel Daga and some other NPFL players, I think we've got what it takes to age past this very strong African side. Senegal are going to bring what they have. But I think Nigeria are also going to bring what they have. And we will have to settle it on the pitch of play. The likes of uh, Egypt are also a big nation as far as African football. But I don't think we should under, uh, underrate Mozambique because many people think Mozambique are going to be the whooping boys. I mean, football is not like that anymore. It can be on the paper that they are the whooping boys. But on the pitch of play, they could come up with a, a whole different style of football. So it's going to be a very, very difficult game for, uh, difficult tournament for the Flying Eagles. But I think they are equal to the tax. Of course, Coach Ladam Boso, with all his experience, I think he can make Nigeria proud. Well, uh, usually it feels like we always have like fantastic lineup. On, I mean, uh, of players, but uh, technicality seem to always be the issue. So, do you think that we have uh, what it takes? I mean, in terms of technicality now, to knowing the the type of player to deploy at a certain time, who to play a certain wing, and you know the defense and what have you. Uh, you know the format of play. Do you think that we have all of that together? Yeah, I, well, I must appreciate you for that question, talking about technicality, because if, if, if it's talent, we've got talent here in the country. We've got talent, but the technicality, uh, the right to know 
uh, which player is suitable for a particular position. That is that is uh, raised on the coach. And I, I think Coach Nadam Boso is a quality manager. He knows his players and he knows the strength of his players. And a man who knows his onion, he, he will certainly deploy these players at the right position. The likes of Daniel Daga, for me, I think that's going to be the player to watch. He, he was uh, pro prolific in the qualification. And uh, he, he's been in the camp uh, for uh, the under-20. He plays for Dakota FC and is certainly going to be a one to watch in that particular midfield. So uh, that question uh, about technicality, yes, we've got a te technicality. But the other question of uh, if we know how to deploy the players uh, to suit their quality, that is on Laden Boso, and I can vouch for him. Well, moving away from, you know, the uh, under-20 Flying Eagles now, uh, let's look at the Revolution Cups. We've been told that our technical director uh, has actually listed 26 players for the Super Falcon match, and uh, we're very, uh, a lot of people are quite, pretty excited that you have the likes of Asisato Shola, who does the magic every other time when, you know, she plays in... Uh, her own club and other, you know, players. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, my, my thoughts are that uh, it's going to be an incredible tournament as we're preparing for the FIFA Women's World Cup. I know a lot of people have not still forgiven uh, the Super Falcons for the abysmal performance at the WAFCON uh, last year in Morocco. So it's going to be rested on them for them to uh, prove that they are still number one as far as African football is concerned. You made mention of the of Shola. She's actually scored two hat-tricks <laughs> in one month. So she's on fire. She's on fire. But one thing we would love to see is uh, bringing that energy, bringing that momentum to the camp of uh, the Super Falcons and infecting the players uh, with the high quality and so that everyone can... Because football is not... Uh, a one-man sports. Football is a team sport. Everyone needs to uh, play in their department. They need to ensure that the department is uh, solid enough so that the goal-scoring department, if the defense is good, if the midfield is good, that means the, the striker is going to be good as well. So uh, if, she, if she can bring that momentum, it can bring that infectious uh, goal-scoring habit to, the, uh, to this, the camp of the Super Falcons, then I think the best is yet to come for the Super Falcons. Go to the tournament, take on the likes of Mexico, who are, of course, a great footballing nation as far as women's football is concerned, the likes of Costa Rica and the rest, and then prepare for the FIFA Women's World Cup. Without a doubt, Nigeria have shown the quality in African football, but I think it's time for them to show it on the world stage. Mm. So, but do you think we have enough preparation? I mean, uh, do you think that the girls are pretty ready in terms of preparation to meet uh, these other teams that will be playing and not also looking at it uh, likely because they're also not a team that you just walk past there uh, in terms of the group staging and what have you uh, does seem to be you know pretty tough so do you think that preparation we have all that uh, we should do to um, go ahead and win this particular tournament no we don't have as we speak as we speak we don't have enough preparation i mean sometimes you need to uh, lose the battle to win the war even if we don't perform in this tournament I want us to perform, but even if we don't perform, but well, we can learn from our mistakes, we can learn from our own undoing, and then get things right before the senior tournament, which is the FIFA Women's World Cup, then we can talk about, but this tournament, this tournament, I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting them to get back up just like the champions we know them for. Like they said, to be a champion, it doesn't, doesn't matter that you win all the time. It, all, all that matters is how you recover from winning. The Super Falcons have shown technical abilities. I think it's time for them to show bounce back abilities in this Revelation Cup. So let's just say this Revelation Cup is for them to bounce back and prepare for the senior uh, FIFA Women's World Cup. So I will just, you know, leave it very open. And this would be, you know, the final for us as we uh, call, call it a wrap right here on the show. Now, if you had a minute or five minutes to just, you know, be the coach of this team, what exactly would you do? Where would you be paying attention to? Uh, what would be the focus for you? I'll first of all pay attention on the mentality of the, the girls. Let them know that, hey, there is no room for complacency. There is no room to feel inferior. These players you're going to play in, they are, they are world players. 
but you are also a world star as well. The likes of uh, 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 Rajita Jibade, which is a, a very good player. If I am Norman I'm not, I'm not even going to mention Ashisha Oshola because I'm pretty sure everyone in the world has seen what she can do. So let's talk about this young, this young names who are yet to make it big in the world stage. So you just have to uh, speak some confidence in, into them and, and help their mentality and also get your tactics right. That's where the question mark comes on the coach, Randy Waldrum. But at this point in time, I'm the coach, right? So I'm going to, first of all, uh, build, up, build up their mentalities into this game and make sure I bring out a good formation, a good tactics. That's where I'm going to fail because I'm not a coach. So let's just pray Randy Waldrum will bring out the, the right tactics and also motivate the girls mentally. Well, uh, Monday, Thomas, it's always a delight to have you share your thoughts or talk sports with you every Friday right here on The Breakfast. We look forward to having you, uh, you know, talk about sports and all the football, especially in Nigeria, as we proceed. Mercy, it's always a pleasure talking sport with you. My regards to coffee. And that's it. Do you have a fantastic day? We hope you have enough money to spend <laughs> and take care of yourself as we are uh, in the weekend already. Have a great day, Monday. That's it this morning. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, we like that you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we're saying thank you so much for being part of the show. We will return uh, Monday. We hope that you join us as well. My name is Messi Ibukbo. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us. Good morning.